welcome back to the Express at the Richmond Olympic Oval. Today's show is all about things to do to get you up off the couch and get you moving. Even if you feel a little coordinationally challenged, you've got the sport just for you. You can play it anytime, anywhere. It takes just three minutes to set up, five minutes to learn, and the best part is they say it takes a lifetime to master. The speed badminton is great because you can play it anywhere. Super fast, super fun. Speed badminton, the new dimension in racket sports, played with the speedminton gear. The racket head is a squash racket head, has tennis-like strings but is uh, short like a racquetball, so the hand is really close to the sweet spot. They look like shuttlecocks or birdies, as some people might call them, but these are called speeders. Uh, it's a patented design. It's really a match between the speeder and the racket itself. It is about half the size and double the weight of a regular shuttlecock. It's got a golf ball head design, hole in the middle and a shorter basket. It just travels really fast and far. There are six different speed rackets, from starter to aspirational. As Kim shows us, basically, the higher the hype, the lighter the load. I like this racket, of course, because it matches my outfit, and I think that's a priority with any sport out there, but I, why do you like this one so much? Well, this one is our top-level racket. Uh, it's the S1000. I like to say that it's made out of magic and air. Another magical thing about the sport, how easy it is for anyone to pick up and play. I've seen the least coordinated people on earth play this game, of which I was one of. And of which I am also one of. I'm not sure anybody warned Brock. We're just going to turn that the other way, <laughs> this way. Who gets the dubious honor of showing me how to swack. <laughs> slow it down a little bit. Slow it down. I right. thought it was speedminton. No, it's fine. Okay, just so there you go. Just have now. Just drop it and hit. There you go. Now that's better. Hey. Great. Good job. Next, we recruit the other Kim to try and get a little rally going. You missed it, Kim. Hey. Did you notice a key thing that makes it easy to play speed badminton anywhere? No nets. Nice and easy swing. There we go. Beautiful. Good. Now you're ready to rally. So That wasn't the rally? Oh. Huh? Rally starts when he hits it back. Oh, okay. There you go. You just had your first rally. Congratulations. Woo, first rally. Outstanding. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> first rally. As you get more advanced with your swacking skills, that's when the speed kicks in. These can go distances of 100 feet or more and 175 miles per hour. As for why you can play at any time, that's thanks to another cool design feature. There's a translucent head on this one, and you can stick this glow-in-the-dark stick we call a speed light into this hole, and you can play at nighttime, which has some great camping appeal. We play it camping all the time. To find out more about the gear used in speed badminton, you can go to the website speedminton.ca. It's gaining popularity in community rec center programming and in school districts across the country. As for the fun factor, you saw the glow in the dark version? Well, there's also a version called snowminton. Yeah, so you can swack in the snow. Now, our next sport featured on the Express, you could play in the snow, but I don't think you'd want to. Ultimate Frisbee is a winner in the spring and summer, but you know, it's a sport that's not just about winning the game, it's also about the spirit of the game. Oh, there's nothing like it. There's no other sport like it. And even if you're not the fastest runner, everyone's got a part to play. And it's probably the most open sport I can think of in that respect, where you can have players of such different levels and experiences and still have a lot of fun and contribute to the team. It's called Ultimate, but it isn't just your average game of Frisbee. While there are many leagues and teams in larger metropolitan areas, Chilliwack is still hoping to expand the sport's popularity. With simple rules and very little equipment, the Chilliwack Cornhuckers coordinator Ian Gardner hopes the community can catch on to the disc. Well, as you can see, we play on a roughly a soccer field size pitch. We have two end zones, and the idea is to pass the disc successfully from teammate to teammate until you can catch it in the end zone. Uh, there's no running with the disc, so um, all the running happens to get into open space and hopefully someone can get the frisbee to you and then you advance it that way. The league plays from April to August, meeting once per week and making up teams based on who turns out. The Cornhuckers hope to grow more younger players into their crop to ensure the future of Ultimate in the community. For me, I'm kind of like a 
Labrador Retriever. I like to chase things and catch them, and this sport is perfect for it. Even though it's called Ultimate, albeit not because they play rain or shine, the sport does have a courteous code of conduct. All sports have a level of sportsmanship, but Ultimate is the only sport I know that has an actual kind of code of ethics called spirit of the game. Even at the highest, most competitive levels, they don't have referees. It's all self-officiated, and that's an integral part of the sport. And even though the game is moderated by the players, it still requires raw physical ability. People think it's just you go hang out, have a few beers, and toss the frisbee in some jean shorts and a headband. But it's like it's very athletic. You've got to be in good shape. You've got to have coordination to excel at it. Even that being said, anyone can play it because it's, you know, it's fun. It's all about spirit of the game and having a good time. Come out, give it a try. We have all levels of uh, athletic ability and experience in sports. The basic skills can be learned pretty quick, and it's a great sport. In Chilliwack, I'm Tiffany Gurdon for The Express. The website is CanadianUltimate.com to get connected with the ultimate lovers and leagues in your neighborhood. You're watching The Express, and we have two very different ways to get your heart rate up. Coming up. Pretty dangerous, you know, you're, you're going fast down open roads. Longboarding on the steep slopes of North Vancouver. <laughs> Dog sledding in the Sioux Valley. The Express, we are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. LoungeHairStudio.com Join Mana Mansour on Pacific Center's West Coast Style as she examines the ethos of what we wear. West Coast Style reflects a love of nature, travel, and adventure. Pacific Center's West Coast Style, exclusively on Shaw TV. Welcome back to the Express at the Richmond Olympic Oval. Rain or shine, this facility offers just about everything that a rec enthusiast could or would want, from court sports to Pilates to the new wall climbing gym. But you know, when the weather is nice, some people get the urge to hit the pavement for a little sidewalk surfing. Of course, hitting the pavement means something very different, whether you're a newbie or a longboarding pro like North Band's Mike McGoldrick. Before Michael McGoldrick was old enough to drive, he used his longboard to get around Vancouver. Now as an adult, it's, uh, it's that same freedom. The pro longboarder has competed all over the world. But now he spends most of his time getting other people to share his passion. Making film, photographs, going out to community events and just educating people. It's videos like this one that make longboarding seem extreme and inaccessible. But McGoldrick says the sport is evolving. Pretty dangerous, you know, you're, you're going fast down open roads. So to help limit our risk, we started going slower, carving, doing power slides and a lot more like snowboarding influenced moves. This is one of our new boards called the Tomahawk. It's sort of like a free riding freestyle board. A little bit higher speed kind of riding your longboard like a snowboard. So this is just a really fun board that kind of changes the way people are thinking about the style of longboarding. Lanyards manufactures longboards right here in Vancouver. We're a team of about 40 guys here building boards, packing them up, assembling and shipping them all around the world now. Blake Startup says longboards are popular with everyone from young teens to businessmen in suits. Longboarding is above anything else a really practical form of transportation as well as recreation. So especially in a city like Vancouver where it's really a hot spot for longboarding, you see people riding them to work, you don't have to lock it up outside like a bike. To prove their claims that longboarding is for everyone, I'm going to try to shred the sidewalk. A little help, of course. So the best way to practice this without rolling away is turn your skateboard upside down. This so feels good. Feels good. So the next <laughs> thing you got to know is, uh, is your shreds dance. My shreds dance? Shreds okay. dance, yeah. Um, so you're going to bend your knees just like any sport. Okay. Hands out over your tip and tail. So push. Stop. Yeah, that's it. And try and make this corner. I bet you can. Yeah, so put, put your hands out like this. Point towards me. Yeah, point some more. 
Oh, yeah. Look at that. You're a longboarder. I can get into the <laughs> so much fun. Now all I need is a little speed. <laughs> I need a motor on this thing. Fact. Pretty much anyone can learn how to longboard. But here's a little advice. Start in flat areas, start in parks, all about doing it in the right environment and with the right equipment. Ooh. I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Vancouver for the Express. God bless the wind. One part hikers, one part high heels. I'm a mountain girl always looking for the next adventure. This is where dreams are made. Dreams that are meant to be shared. From peak to valley, from snow to sun. I'm Nicole Fitzgerald, and this is The Fitz List. Doing everything you've ever wanted to do. This is the sound of happy dogs. So rest easy in your sled. What once was horrific has now transformed to hope. Our dogs are very well cared for. We've changed the kennel drastically of what we've done. We've free run all our dogs, we've fixed all our males. Generally, our dogs are extremely happy. Change has been a big part of these dogs' lives recently. They are among the 151 survivors of the Whistler Outdoor Adventures Massacre. The company received worldwide condemnation when a suspected 50 to 100 healthy dogs were slaughtered two years ago. The sledding operation was gifted to a new charity foundation and the Whistler Sled Dog Company was born. We offer dog sled tours for guests. We are owned by a foundation, the Sled Dog Foundation, which all our proceeds go to and then from there the foundation then allocates the money, the profits of the proceeds to other charities or bettering the life of sled dogs. Next up is Dumbledore. Dumbledore is just a four-year-old, pretty crazy, lots of energy. He's going to be doing all the power today, pulling all the sleds. Asking dog sled musher William Jackson to name his favorite dog is like asking a mother to pick their favorite child. I have 151 favorite dogs. <laughs> Smarties, she's getting pretty old. She's almost eight now. Um, her name's Smarties because she has two different colored eyes. She's part of the chocolate bar litter, so every time we have a litter, we have different themes for each litter. And her litter, like I said, was a chocolate bar, so there's Mars Bar and Score and Twix and Lucky and Smarties. Every single one of them has a different personality, and you know, it's just a great feeling to work with them and see how excited they are and live off their energy. Okay. So what we're going to do now is harness the dogs. Okay. So I'm going to give you a harness right here. All right. And I'm going to take a harness as well. Guests get to experience that energy on an interactive hands-on tour. There you go, Smarty. A dog aptly named Hurricane excitedly drags me over to the sled. <laughs> the dogs love what they do. They, um, this is what they're born and bred to. They've been doing it all their life. and. It's like when you say walk to your dog, they just get really excited. Same thing with us. As soon as they see that the sleds are out, they're ready to run. The dogs run us along rivers and landscapes framed with mountain views. But soon my viewing experience shifts from a seated to standing perspective. Well, driving dogs today is very simple. You have your handlebar right here. Okay. You can always hold on to your handlebar. You never let go of your handlebar. <laughs> Because these dogs will just go whether you're on the back or not. <laughs> Next up, you have this nice metal bar here. Very high tech. It's uh, called your brake. All you got to do is slam that into the ground to stop the slide. Okay. Then you're going to be standing on your nice runners here and holding on. So as easy as that. <laughs> All right. How the tour mushes out is as unique as company aspirations. The Whistler Sled Dog Company aims to become a leader in their field contributing to the standardization of dog sled operations and raising the bar on sled dog care. We're looking at doing quite a few different sort of projects. Um, one of them is to sort of create a better living atmosphere for dogs. So we're going to study our kennel and see what changes we can implement to better off their life, as well as we're going to look at their diets. We are going to offer everything that we've studied and learned to anybody that is interested in um, just listening to us, what we have to say, and take what they can out of it to better off their kennels. 
Better kennels means better lives, which means happier dogs and cleaner guests. There's lots of opportunities to interact with the dogs, including when you wrap up the tour at the yurt with a nice hot chocolate and cookie. You may have to share it. <laughs> Sharing the love is what this company is about, and you only need to look to the dogs to know this tale comes with a happy ending. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. All the proceeds from the tour go toward animal charities. And a tip for the tour, bring ski goggles if you have them because the dogs really kick up the snow. For more things to do around Metro Vancouver, the Fraser Valley and the Sea to Sky, we've got today's Express Spotlight. Eat, Play, Love Fitness invites you to experience a one-day fitness kickstart program in Deep Cove where you'll burn up to 3,500 calories. Five Peaks at Golden Ears Provincial Park will have you running over rocks, roots, tree stumps and logs by taking you off-road and into the hills. Positive impact on you, no impact on the environment. Adventure racing starts here. Suburban Rush Adventure Race is a 30K off-road multi-sport race which includes mountain biking and running. Okay, so did we do our job? Did we inspire you to get up and get moving? We'd also like to hear from you on what you like to do once spring has sprung. And invite you to share your ideas with us on Facebook and Twitter. We'd also like to thank you for watching The Express only on Shaw TV.